thank you so much for joining us in this uh, in our webinar series number two, managing MOOC project development. So basically, for MOOC project development, we would like to see your progress. Maybe you want to know uh, which stage are you on uh, the level of your progress. So actually, we will introduce you on using Microsoft Teams. So if I will show you uh, on how you want to access your Microsoft Teams after this. So for today's session as well, we will uh, we will we have invite Dr. Terry Lucas as uh, deputy director of learning technology as well. Okay, actually both of us um, uh, in charge, uh, and we are we are actually uh, really happy to help you in order for you to complete your MOOC. So basically, if you have any question, you either can ask to me or Dr. Terry on how you want to develop your MOOC. Okay, we will start our session. Again, if you're not familiar using WebEx, okay, if you, if it's, you see it's unmute, it means that you are unmute, so it's already turned off. But if you want to ask questions, you may uh, unmute yourself. There's there's a button, it's a green, so it means you can speak and we could hear you clearly. And if you didn't want to have uh, questions directly to us, you can uh, ask your question, type your question in the chat box. We will try to, we will try to answer all of the questions at the end of the session. So for today's session, both of us, me and Dr. Terry, will introduce you on how using Microsoft Teams to observe or to monitor your progress in your MOOC development. So I will introduce you on how to use Microsoft Teams app. So either you can open it using Microsoft Teams desktop or web, or you may download apps, Microsoft Teams app in your mobile phone, either using uh, iOS or Android. Both of them are possible to download it. And then I will introduce you uh, several features in MOOC Dev Teams. Actually, it's a name of our Microsoft Teams. We call it as MOOC DEV or MOOC Dev or MOOC Developers. Okay, I will introduce you uh, several features such as general channel and uh, the progress tab. You may, it's not just us to monitor your progress. You also could see your own progress. So you could know which one you should, uh, which one you have done, which one you, it's not complete yet. So um, it's easy. So for both of us could easily uh, monitor your progress as well. And the faculty channel, uh, actually, each of the faculty have their own channel, so you could easily share your own documents. Or if you have any questions regarding your MOOC, you easily you can easily uh, ask the questions there. And actually, me and also Dr. Terry, both of us are actively um, monitoring our Microsoft Teams. So no worries about the response. We will respond as soon as possible. And Dr. Terry will uh, share with you several features in the MOOC Dev Teams as well, such as a resource hub channel. Uh, yeah, there are also webinars channels. Actually, we share uh, all the recordings, uh, webinars that involve in MOOC. We also share in the in the MOOC Dev Teams as well. And there's also FAQ channel, and also the ex external resources. Uh, from come YouTube, you may refer to it. So it's easily if you need uh, to have a additional reference or you might want to check it out. And Dr. Terry also would share the useful of Microsoft Teams features for MOOC development, okay, such as recording videos via Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Stream. Okay, let's move on to the next one okay 
uh, this one I show you the some example of the apps in your mobile phone if you're using iOS just click Microsoft Teams. both of us just search for Microsoft Teams and there's the logo yeah, you could download it and you could easily monitor or maybe you want to have a communicate with uh, using Microsoft Teams easily by using your handphone. This is the first method if you want to use Microsoft Teams using your handphone. I will show you on how using directly using your web. Okay. If you want to using Microsoft Teams desktop, you might want to search Microsoft Teams. Okay, just Microsoft Teams. That's it on Google. And you could search this one, the, the, the second link, login Microsoft team here. Okay, you want to click on it. Sometimes it's pop up like this. So either one, you switch to Malaysia English or stay in the United States. So basically, if you want to use this Microsoft team via uh, web, okay, you can sign in. Okay, actually, our in Unimas we already have the Microsoft Teams, so you could sign in using your Unimas email address, and also your password using the Unimas ID. Since okay, if I'm not mistaken, okay, actually I've already logged into my account, so it's basically automatically I've already uh. Log in, log into my account. So for if you want to try, uh, maybe you want to try uh, uh, right now. Okay, when you log in, you should use your Unimas uh, email address and also your Unimas password. So you will directly go to this uh, web page. Okay, so currently uh, we have this is our team uh, and the the three others here is actually my another team. Okay. So we are focusing on this one, MOOC devs here, MOOC developer. So you can click on it, okay? And you will see we actually have uh, several tabs here on the left hand side. If you are uh, sometimes uh, you sometimes when you log in, sometimes it's going to the chat here. But when you want to go to your Teams MOOC devs team, you could search it by clicking Teams here it will be automatically uh, you can see it uh, your team here okay so move that uh, if i'm not mistaken we already added your name into this team so hopefully you manage to access you are able to access to move that but if uh, if you didn't see uh, this team in your microsoft teams please let us know so maybe uh, there's a Maybe there's the setting is not right, so we will add again your name into this MOOC devs team. Yeah. So this is the another method. Okay. The easy way to just to access your Microsoft Teams is by using your uh, address. Okay. Uh, it's not email address or using your Outlook. Okay. When you open your email, okay, you must Outlook here. Where there's a nine dots at the top left corner here, right? Just click on it and you will see there's an apps here, okay? So there's themes, just click on it. So basically you go straight forward to your uh, Microsoft Teams. So there are several ways to, uh, to access the Microsoft Teams, either using your handphone, your mobile phone, or using your, Microsoft Teams desktop or web or just directly or using your uh, Outlook, Unimas Outlook. So there you go, it's the same thing as well. So when you click move MOOC devs here, okay, this theme, generally you will see there's a lot of tab under this general, general, post, files, stuff, notebook and progress. So under this general, when you scroll, uh, scroll up, okay, we actually have uh, shared to you, okay, several of, uh, you can see, this is the last year, MOOC 2021, okay. 
So uh, we also have shared several of example, the promo video, how you want to do promo video. And there's a lot of uh, going on around here. Or, yeah. So this is 2021, okay, which is uh, a new year. And also, if there's any uh, announcement or if you want any help, you can, maybe you could, okay, just give us uh, a message here, okay, we will, um, we'll give you the response. So under this general, okay, uh, the interesting part under this general is a progress. So under this progress, okay, when you click on it, we actually have provided several items, what you need to do, uh, what is your next task. So at least you know, uh, at least you know what you, sh what you need to do, what is not complete yet, and what are the things that you need to do uh, for completing your MOOC. So basically we have divided, divide the task, actually it's the same task as well, but we divide it into uh, all of the faculties, at least all the faculties involved involved in producing this MOOC, they know what have they done. This is like a tick, but a tick button. Once it's done, you just click tick on it. So, uh, for example, maybe for faculty of arts here, you have okay. I will explain one by one what what you need to do. Okay, so if you done identifying objective, it means that okay. The list is not in there, so uh, there's like from six tasks under MOOC content development, you need to have another five more to do. Okay, so basically there are five faculties which will develop MOOC for 2021. So it's the first faculty, faculty of arts here, faculty of cognitive science and human development. Okay, and then faculty of language as well here. Yeah? and faculty of uh, social science and faculty of science social, oops, sorry. Okay, science social. All right, so there are five, uh, but if you scroll to the right, okay, you will see another uh, MOOC, which is from 2020, because we started using this Microsoft Teams to monitor the progress uh, from 2020. So basically this is the, you can say, uh, the progress for the previous MOOC. But now we will focus on these five faculties for 2020. All right. So I will expand one by one, get okay, the task that we need to do uh, to complete our MOOC. So first of all, okay, you can see here, okay. Um, for Faculty of Cognitive Science in Human Development, uh, actually, we uh, you are doing a mi micro credential, okay, micro credential MOOC. So, uh, because when you see the Faculty of Language here, uh, there uh, they will produce a MOOC with industry. So that's why there are not an additional tasks for Faculty of Language because they need to provide MOE with in this industry. So basically, they have additional uh, additional tasks, just one, okay, to provide MOA with the industry. But for the rest, which are producing or develop MOOC, micro credential MOOC, you don't need to have a MOA with industry. So first of all, there will be a consultation session between me and also Dr. Terry. Uh, for consultation session, it's just a a, a short discussion. Uh, maybe you would like to share your uh, course plan. Maybe you are still, uh, I can say, confused which one you need, to, what, what you need to do, how you want to develop or to construct your MOOC, uh, MOOC content. So we will discuss there. So at least you have a clear idea on how to develop or how to create your MOOC content for, for this, uh, yeah, for, for your MOOC. So uh, for your consultation session, uh, we, uh, it's either me or Dr. Terry. We will email to you uh, when, when you are available to have this uh, discussion or consultation session. Uh, basically, it depends on 
it depends on uh, your availability when you are free to do this discussion with uh, both of us. All right, and after you have a consultation session, and then you will see, then you can start your, when you, you have a clear idea, then you can start doing your MOOC content development. So identifying objective, okay, of course, you need to have your own objective. And then you need to have your own CLOs, course learning outcomes. And after that, uh, you need to have your own uh, topics and subtopics. Okay, so actually this one, okay, maybe it's really general. So I will show you and maybe I will share this document. For example, hopefully you can see this one. Example of self-instructional module. So uh, it's just an a example, a template where you can start uh, doing or writing or maybe construct your uh, your MOOC content here, okay? Um, because you are doing a whole course, a complete course for your MOOC. Of course, there are several of topic will be, uh, you will, maybe you will do several of topics. So for topic one, maybe, okay, what is the name? Uh, what is the title of your topic one? You can write it here, okay, topic one. And what of, uh, and what is your learning outcome? for this topic one to achieve your uh, course learning outcome, the overall of your learning outcome. Maybe to understand or to create something or to analyze something, okay? You can edit it, all right? I will share to you in this Microsoft Teams as well. So uh, each one of you could could start to, to construct your, your module. And then, of course, under topic one, it's not just only, uh, maybe you only have one topic. There's no subtopics under topic one. But maybe, uh, for example, if you want, okay, for example, I I've, uh, I want to do uh, solar energy. So my topic one is solar energy, but I have several subtopic under solar energy. Maybe introduction, maybe I could put, Okay, my subtopic one, the title is Introduction to Solar Energy. And under subtopic two, Application of Solar Energy. Uh, maybe, you have, maybe you have several of subtopics under your, uh, your main topic one there. Okay, so after you know, okay, you have already know your topics, your subtopics. Okay, this just uh, topic one. Maybe you have a topic two, topic three. So it's the same thing as well. So under subtopic one, if you want to say it's introduction of uh, solar energy, maybe your video one is about introduction of solar energy. Okay. Uh, so the title of the video, maybe you want to put it as number there, or you could put it as introduction of solar energy. You can do, uh, basically you need to provide a video. Either you want to have, uh, if either you want to record or sh uh, to do a shooting in a, our MOOC studio, okay. Uh, Mr. Mazuki will help you in if you want to do a MOOC recording, or just let me know. I will I will book a slot for you, and I will inform with Mazuki to stand by when you are ready to do the shooting. Okay, it's not just about the shooting. Just uh, usually we are using uh, MOOC studio as your video. But some of the MOOC using a screen recording, okay, sometimes you need, uh, you want to, it's not just do this, uh, do the MOOC recording in iStudio. Sometimes you want to share uh, uh, something like screen recording. If you have a software you want to show, it, you couldn't do it in the MOOC studio. You need to do a screen recording. So. Actually, it's one of the video you could use for your learning materials. And of course, it's not just one video. You could share several of videos as long it is related and relevant to your subtopic, number one. So again, if you, this is the learning material, supposedly is your own video. But if you have external or additional resources, you, could, you can put it as additional resources. Uh, and this further readings or additional resources, it's also compulsory to to have it in your uh, MOOC because it's not just your 
It's just want to have uh, the participants that join your MOOC to have another resources, okay, external resources. So at least you need to provide additional resources such as external links, okay, maybe YouTube or articles. So basically, uh, most, okay, I can say most of our MOOCs using external links and also from journal articles, okay. So after you have uh, complete your learning materials, you know what uh, what you will provide for your MOOC as your learning materials, then you can do, of course, we need to have some activities for the students because uh, all of the activities or all of the assessments, it will be recorded in the MOOC. So when, because the MOOC, uh, in the future, MOOC will be used as a credit transfer. So when you provide the activities and also assessment this this all activities and assessment will be recorded and will be as a portfolio to the students so at least when when they request for a, a credit transfer they could uh, they could provide you their own portfolio which uh, which involve all the activities that have been done in your MOOC and also assessment Okay, so the activities as well, there's a lot of um, uh, tools or I can say features in the open learning. Okay, we are using open learning for your MOOC. So it's, it's similar with our EDIP. There's a forum board. Uh, they could, uh, you, can, you could also use a reflective journal as your one of your activities. And also a chat, maybe a chat, okay, to to have a, a discussion between you and also among the on uh, among the participants as well, and the assessment. Okay, I uh, would like to uh, I would like to remind again the assessment is not just a random assessment you can do. Basically, assessment is uh, to achieve the your course learning outcome. So if your if your course learning outcome is Maybe for example, discuss, discuss the importance of using or uh, discuss the application of using solar energy. So if it discuss, for me, okay, uh, in my opinion, multiple choice quiz is not, uh, I can say it's not suitable to put it as a discuss, yeah? Maybe it's more to understand, okay? But to discuss, you need to have a discussion among you, uh, with, uh, with you, between you and uh, the participants. So, uh, so you need to be careful, okay? You need to select an appropriate assessment in open learning in order, okay, as long as it, uh, the CLO could be achieved. Of course, learning outcome can be achieved, yeah? So I will show you, okay, so this is about uh, uh, the self-instructional model. I will show you an example, the existing MOOC, uh, Unimas MOOC, which uh, I can say it's a, a good example for you to see that already have this uh, better of uh, self-instructional model. So I will show you, okay, one of example here. It's from the faculty of medical. Okay. One of example. Okay. Best. I just uh, uh, give you some introduction. A general introduction. This is basically uh, when you have uh, developed all of your learning contents. You have a plan. Uh, you have complete all of your instructional module there, and all of your videos will be. Uh, I can say will be download or will be upload at this uh, web page, Open Learning. Okay, so this is uh, more uh, improve, improving clinical reasoning, reducing diagnostic error. So as you can see here, okay, uh, maybe may I just skip it when you when you go to this mode. Basically, the home. Okay, what what will you see? at your home main page is something like this. Okay, it's loading right now. Okay. So uh, you need, 
okay basically you need of, of course you need to have a welcome introduction and then this is the promo video okay we will see the next task promo video uh, you will need to do after it's suggested after you have done uh, your learning materials or if you have done uh, to the if you have done developing all of your learning materials but if you want to do it at the same time when you do your learning material it should be okay it's it's it should be better yeah so this is the learning uh, this is the promo video okay okay the promo video is just an introduction just to promote your course okay your MOOC course to the uh, to the participants who would like to join your MOOC okay so under this home uh, page as well there's also a course synopsis you can see that at least when the participants join uh, your MOOC they know okay they know what 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 is your MOOC about and the learning outcomes at least they know the expected outcomes what they can learn from your MOOC and okay uh, also these uh, external resources here and of course if you uh, you need to provide okay maybe this is a uh, i can say a uh, recommended and if you want to uh, just to introduce the dean uh, from your faculty and also the deputy deans it depends on you but the important part is the course instructor so so basically okay basically the participant would know who will be their instructors for this mode okay so these are some examples uh, of MOOC that you could refer when you want when you started to develop your uh, MOOC using this open learning platform. So we go back to the learning activities, okay, the instructional module. Okay, as been mentioned earlier, okay, this is ov overview. At least you mentioned, okay, at least uh, when I uh, forward to you or when I share with you the the document earlier okay the documents earlier maybe you can write the overview of your first topic okay it mentioned here let me zoom in okay so it mentioned here okay the overview or i can say the overall what you can what you can get from this first topic Okay, the learners will also learn about the influence. Okay, this is the first objective uh, for this overview of the first topic. So the objectives for the first topic is not the overall of objective. That's why in 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 here, okay. Again, in this uh, self instructional module, it's already been stated that the topic learning outcome for topic one, okay, in order to achieve the CLO. Okay, each of the topic, of course, they, you have your own uh, uh, objective or outcome for each topic. So, okay, so basically, uh, the smoke already provide you what is the, uh, what are the learning uh, topic objective, topic learning objective for the first topic here. So, there are six objectives. Okay, after that, at least when you when you uh, imagine that you are participants that joining this MOOC, at least we have a rough idea okay for this first topic okay i will learn about okay i know what i i learned about this first topic and then okay at the end of this lesson okay i know what i can get from this first topic so these are the the learning materials you can see this is a video for introduction to patient safety so there are another video again for root cause analysis so there are several videos under this first topic yeah okay there's also notes that that is it's not just because uh, it's you it's not just uh, we not uh, specifying just video only you could also share your own notes as long as it's relevant and it's a learning materials okay so, and then after you have provide all of your learning materials, there's an assessment as well, okay? They're using quiz uh, to assess their students, whether they could understand or not. Uh, or when, once they have gone through the video or the, all the learning materials, okay? 
and then also the activities activities okay here here it mentioned that okay i will show you uh, one of example of this activity okay what is patient so uh, basically it's oops okay basically it's mentioning on watch the video below what is the definition so this is more about discussion do you think the errors highlighted in the video are all preventable so mostly of the activities is uh, discussion more more or less about uh, discussion okay so these are i can say a good example uh, for you to at least i have a rough idea uh, this is the output of your MOOC once you have uh, complete your MOOC. Okay, so this is lesson two. So everything is the same as well. Okay, the, the structure is the same. The learning materials, okay, video or notes, or you can share it PowerPoint. Okay, and the assessment as well is a quiz. Okay, and the activity mostly they are using forum. And of course, uh, here they if you see maybe in this one has taken okay the it's you need to provide as well the external resources so there are four things you need to provide okay uh, from this self-instructional module there are four things that you provide first of all okay your learning materials in video or in powerpoint uh, okay Mostly the mostly uh, videos producing video, yeah, and then the second one need to provide as well any additional resources or for the readings, yeah. and the third one uh, you need to provide the activities for the students, and the fourth one is the assessment. Okay, at least you could access uh, the level of understanding of your participants once they join your MOOC. Okay, so this is for the uh, self instructional module. So we go again to our uh, Microsoft Teams. Okay, so this is the MOOC content. We just going through for the MOOC content development. So once you finish uh, identifying all of your objective, all of the CLOs, topics, subtopics, okay, this is the design instructional design. Okay, learning activities and assessment. Once you're done, okay, then you can go to the next stage, which is to produce your videos. All right. So when you want to produce your video, um, just let me know if you want to use MOOC Studio. I uh, will uh, inform. I will book a slot for you, and I will inform to Mazuki to stand by and to be ready one once you are uh, available and ready to do a shooting for your uh, video yeah so once okay basically once uh, once the video is is already uh, i can say it's already okay and good to go mazuki will okay uh, mr mazuki will give it to me so i will help you I will help you to put your video into your MOOC page. So no worries about that. As long as you could provide, okay, as long as you have done shooting your uh, video, done shooting MOOC video, uh, uh, the rest I will help you to upload it in your MOOC. Yeah. So once you've done your uh, MOOC, uh, MOOC video or all of the learning, uh, learning materials, okay, Okay, this the second, uh, the first, second, and third stage here. Okay, the third stage is to upload all the materials in open learning. It's not just, uh, it's not just about the learning materials, but you need to also to provide the activities. Okay, previously, uh, in the MOOC uh, from the Faculty of Medical, you actually. Uh, see the active several of activities being provided and also the assessments okay but sometimes since okay since open learning is another platform okay it's different from elif okay uh, if you uh, can say confused on how to use the open learning tools just let me know and actually we will have another seminar on how to 
use uh, to use tools available in open learning okay so uh, basically okay if you but no worries if you're still uh, confused on how to use it just let me know i can help you to upload or to just to uh, to create to create uh, several of activities and assessment to your MOOC as long as you give me you can provide me what kind of activities you would like that's why a discussion between uh, MOOC MOOC members and uh, with us, uh, with me and also Dr. Terry, is is really helpful. At least we know what are the things that we can help you. What are the things that we we need we need from you to provide, so we could upload all your materials in Open Learning Platform. All right. So after you have done, okay, after you have done all the materials all after you have done update all of your materials on open learning okay then it will come to the content vetting okay since we are not expert in your content okay we uh, the faculty will choose one of your okay faculty members to be as subject matter expert or you can call it as sme so they will be appointed okay from your faculty we will also give a appointment letter from come as a vetting or as a vetter sorry as a vetter to vet your uh, your all of your uh, con all of your material contents in open learning that you have provided in open learning okay so okay i will show you what are the criteria uh, been uh, vetted yeah the criteria for evaluating your MOOC so this is an example of the form for rubric for evaluating MOOC okay you must cost content so this rubric will will we will give it to your uh, to your SME okay subject matter expert okay so basically they will uh, view and they will uh, observe your learning resources or content okay as you can see here uh, powerpoint style every everything every learning materials that you have uploaded in open learning okay are accurate and relevant so they will check it the contents is it accurate so uh, so there is one feature uh, the second so this basically from unit one until you okay until okay at, Maybe you have at unit uh, at units, so they will review all of your at units. So the second one, they will review okay your learning resources or contents, either it's open source or original. So it's all about a copyright. So uh, just want to recall back our first uh, series of uh, MOOC webinar series, uh, we have highlighted on the copyright issue. So uh, they will double check again. Is it uh, is it uh, free from any copyright issue, or if if there's an issue, they will uh, give a comment there. All right. And the third one is about the activities. Okay. So they will see either the uh, activities is suitable uh, for each of your topic. Is it suitable or relevant? And the fourth one would be the assessment. Okay. As been mentioned earlier, your assessment need to be uh, suitable and it will comply your course learning outcomes. So again, if it's a discussion, so it's not suitable to do quiz. So you need to have a, maybe a forum just to discuss between uh, you and also the participants. Okay, and let's see how deep, uh, how critical discussion, how critical thinking the participants could discuss in the session. Okay, so there is one assessment. So this is where the your SME will review: is it um, suitable and relevant? Uh, your assessment towards your course learning outcomes for each topic. And the fifth one, okay, okay, I've, this is the overall rating. Okay, uh, they will give you: is it a good? Is it a very good to be published under MOOC Unimas? Okay, if maybe there's something uh, they concern about your title maybe they could suggest to it but uh, mostly they didn't suggest any changes of your title uh, your MOOC title 
and then the seventh uh, criteria. Okay, does the MOOC course introduction page provide clear description? Okay, course synopsis, learning outcomes. Okay, this is basically in open learning. Okay, let me show you okay, from this one. In open learning, once, okay, this is the improving clinical reasoning uh, using, okay. Uh, basically, when they want to join, okay, if the participant want, participants want to join, so this is the, I can say the home, it's not the home page, it's the promo page, say promo page. Uh, so they will have a clear idea, okay, basically your MOOC, okay, it's mentioned here, start any time. So it's a flexible MOOC, okay, the duration is flexible. Okay, and the cost is free. So basically, this uh, information you need to provide it as well. But we again, we will show you on how to uh, to key in. I can say to write in your uh, to write in where you need to write in in this uh, open learning platform. So there are there are specific section where you could write this uh, all of our information. Okay, and then in this page also you need to provide. Of course, the summary, the introduction of your course. So before they could join in, okay, join in your MOOC, at least they have a rough idea what is your MOOC all about. So it's all about the synopsis of your MOOC, okay. And then you could, uh, you need to provide as well your course learning outcomes, okay, basically what you can get from your MOOC. At least uh, they have a rough idea. The participants have a rough idea. Okay, uh, I will have this inform. I will have this knowledge when I've complete my MOOC. Okay, and then once they satisfy, they can join this. Okay, either they can click join now uh, down here. Okay, or can click join now uh, this uh, this button. Okay. And again, of course, uh, who is supporting you? Okay, of course, the Unima Smoke and also the instructors uh, involved for the smoke. Okay, we will show you later uh, in our next webinar, okay, on how you want to do it in open learning platform. Right? So basically, that is for the rubric for number seven. So the number seven, uh, it mentioned, does, the MOOC, does your MOOC course uh, have provide clear description, synopsis, learning outcomes, instructor information, okay, total learning duration, so something like that. Okay, so number eight here does the MOOC promotional video is informative, easy to understand, interesting, and appropriate to the target audience? So, this is the uh, okay, uh, this is the other one. Okay, maybe I'll show you, okay. I show you this one. This one is of course content vetting. So actually content vetting is done. So you need to develop promo video as well. So after you have done promo video, this is when a promo video vetting come. Okay. Okay, let me show this uh, the rubric again. This is about the promo video vetting. Yeah. So the your SME will review again your promo video is it suitable okay is it informative so if there's comment or suggestion they will write uh, in this box and number nine oh sorry number nine ten and eleven here okay it, for the content all of the contents including your promo video if there are any elements in politics sensitive issues sensitive issues such as politics religion race or ethnicity maybe need to uh, identify as well because we don't want our MOOC to be in trouble, okay? And for this is specifically for MOOC credit transfer or MOOC micro credentials, okay? Uh, of course, if you want to do credit transfer or MOOC micro credentials, you need to double check the contents. Is it tally or is it, uh, I can say, is it the same as your uh, cost plan which has been accredited by NQA. So we need to double check it again because at least 80% is the same as your uh, course which has been accredited by NQA. Yeah. So number 11 here, based on the content, cost, should cost, uh, maybe, maybe uh, in the future, 
if you want to have a fee, uh, maybe you could suggest, okay, uh, if you want to charge a fee. But for now, all of our mode is free. Yeah. So last but not least, is, is there any additional comments or suggestions? So if they have any other comments, they will write it. So it will review by your uh, subject matter expert and will be endorsed by your dean or your deputy dean. So basically that is for the uh, vetting session. All right, this is what they will review. Okay, we'll go again to your another next task. So for your promo video development, uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick, okay, Mr. Fitzpatrick will in charge and will help you to create, okay, to develop your promo video. Uh, uh, same as uh, Mr. Mazuki, you can email to me if you are ready to go for shooting for your promo video. I will book a slot for you. I will inform to a uh, fit, okay. Uh, when is the right time for you to do the promo video? Yeah, doing the video. Okay, no worries about that. Once you have done, it's just once you have done shooting your promo video, Fitzpatrick will give the complete, okay, the finish, uh, I can say the complete promo video to me and I will help you to upload in your open learning. Okay, so no worries, as long as you could provide all of the material, I can help you to upload it in Open Learning. All right. Once you have done all of uh, from the content development, promo video, and if the vetting session is already done, okay, uh, then we will go for a pilot test. Okay. Once it's okay, then we will open your MOOC public. We will publish your MOOC. So then it will be 100% complete, yeah? So basically, okay, this is the overall MOOC progress. So we have done, uh, we have do it as a percentage here. So attending MOOC workshop is one of important thing, at least uh, you, uh, you actually uh, join the MOOC workshop, at least you know what, what are the things that you need to do. So it's 10%, once you've done, uh, once you have, attend the MOOC workshops, it's already 10%. And we will have another, as we mentioned earlier, we will have another uh, consultation session or just a brief discussion uh, between me and Dr. Terry and uh, with all of your members, MOOC members. And once you're done, okay, we have 20% uh, progress. And then this MOOC content development, okay, MOOC content development, if you're done identifying uh, all your course objective, uh, learning learning outcome, and as well, what is the topic, subtopics, when you have listed all, all of that, okay, you're done. You have already achieved 40%, okay? And then going to your video materials, this is where you want to develop your uh, learning material. Maybe you want to, to use a MOOC, uh, MOOC studio. Once you have done all of your uh, uh, video, okay, it's sixty percent. Then once you've done finish uploading all the materials, which is in, which including the activities, the assessment, then you will get seventy percent. Okay. Once everything's been done and everything's been uploaded in Open Learning, then we will go for the content vetting by your representative from your faculty, subject matter expert, and from our site, come MOOC unit. So uh, your representative from your faculty, subject matter expert, it will be focused on the content itself. And for our site, from a CAM unit, or MOOC unit, we will, we will more focus a review on technical expect, yeah? And okay, okay, the promo video development. This is, I can say, you can do it, uh, sim uh, you can do it at the same time when you do the upload materials in open learning, okay, because the promo video vetting as well can be uh, done at the same time as content vetting, okay. Once you have done everything, and we will go for pilot test, okay, once done for pilot test, then it is ready to offer to the public, so it will be 100%. Uh, complete. All right. 
So hopefully it clears, at least you have a general idea of what you need to do, uh, the first step, second step. So if you have uh, any questions, okay, maybe I would, okay, there, I would like to double check on chat, okay. Uh, if you have, uh, uh, I can say if you have any question, just you might uh, you want to ask or you can type it in the chat box. But if you, or if you currently didn't have any question, I will I will pass to uh, Dr. Terry for for the next part. Okay, features in MOOC Dev Teams. Okay, so is there any questions? Okay, I guess there's no question. Okay, Dr. Terry, uh, are you there? Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. <laughs> I forgot yeah. to unmute myself. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Hafiza, for uh, for providing the the progress. I mean, the process lah, of a production, MOOC production lah, at Unimas. Uh, and also, I'd like to inform that we are really seriously using Microsoft Teams lah, in this to monitor and to track, to provide support in the progression that in your MOOC development uh, process, overall process. So since we have a lot of projects that we have to manage. So Microsoft team is a good way for us to uh, help us with the monitor, to monitor your development. Okay, all right, can you see the screen? Yes. Uh, okay, so so, so we, are, we are using Microsoft team. Okay, so uh, make sure that you use, you also download the desktop version of the Microsoft team. Okay, so there are two types. Just now, uh, what Dr. Hafiza, shared to us was uh, the web version okay uh, that one is good as well uh, but don't forget to download the desktop version because usually the desktop version is is more stable and sometimes it has more feature compared to the web version so it's good to download your uh, download a version of microsoft team desktop on your pc or your mac okay at the same time uh, it, microsoft team also available on your on mobile so it's also a good thing to also download the app version of Microsoft Team on your phone. Uh, because sometimes we also, sometimes we have a, one of the function in Teams is, a, is, is the chat function. So the chat function here, okay, uh, it helps us to keep, to quickly respond to you. In case you have a quick question to ask, uh, you can just uh, type in, in Microsoft Team app on your phone. Uh, and then we all, re um, Dr. Afiza and I will receive it immediately. Uh, so if it's a uh, quick, uh, if, uh, if it's a question that we can answer quickly, uh, we can quickly reply to you through Microsoft Team app on your mobile phone. Uh, so this Microsoft Team is actually quite powerful. Uh, uh, in is for project development, project management. It's even also used for classroom, okay, for classroom purposes. So for this MOOC development uh, project, we, we we are proposing to use Microsoft Teams. So far we did it last year, okay, and we did use it a lot lah. So I hope that you you if you have not used Microsoft Teams, uh, try to get familiarized with Microsoft Teams, uh, and you might actually might end up like it liking it lah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so there are two types lah. Huh? Download for desktop on your PC or your on your Apple if you are using Mac. Uh, and also for your phone, mobile, okay? Um, okay, so let's say for mobile, they have the iPhone version in case you're using Apple and also for Android. Uh, so one thing nice for Teams is that it had, it's available for both types of uh, operating system, uh, mobile, okay? So it's easy for us to communicate with you and easy for you to get in touch with us as well. All right, so so that one of the homework lah, uh, once your back home task to do is to make sure you install uh, your Teams, okay? All right, so for my part in this session is I'm going to explain to you, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, all right. So in my, for my part, my second half of the session, okay, I'm going to show to you about, about our resource hub, okay? Our resource hub, our webinar, 
and our FAQ, okay, in our Teams, okay. Uh, let me show you again about Teams. This is the Teams desktop that I use, okay. I use it for my class as well, especially for if I do conduct a virtual live session. Uh, so I use Teams instead of WebEx. So they are both the same. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using Teams and there's nothing wrong with using WebEx. They are both good actually. Uh, sometimes you might, some of them might use Zoom, right? Uh, for, for me, personally, I use Microsoft Teams. Uh, uh, so for for this project, for this MOOC project, development project, we have this MOOC devs. Okay, so just what you need to do is just click on it and you will be taken to our MOOC dev teams. All right, so as you can see, we have a lot of projects that we are tracking right now. Okay, we have 10 from last year and also five new ones from this year. So we have 15 Microsoft, um, with 15 uh, projects that we are monitoring. Okay, uh, for the each part, like for example, all some of some of the active ones we do. Uh, so this all these conversations here, uh, when you type in your Teams, it will appear on your apps for communication purposes. Some of the sometimes some of this here we reply through our phone, uh, in Microsoft Team app in your phone, and some of them we reply on our desktop or our web uh, Teams. So it's very flexible uh, how we communicate. Uh, so that's why we really love using Teams. And okay, so try get used to using it. Okay, if you haven't using it, so right. So okay, so that part covered by so all the faculty related teams is covered has covered by Nota Visa. Okay, now we move to the resource hub. In our Teams, we have resource hub. So resource hub is like your library uh, reference uh, in case you want to learn more about MOOC. Okay, what are the references that you can use? Uh, so all of the resources we upload in this resource hub here. Okay. Now, uh, so let me show you from the beginning. Okay, we slowly update lah. All right. Uh, so the first one we uploaded was Calm Compendium because last year was uh, there was a uh, there was a pandemic, right? So most of us have to do quickly move to remote teaching. So this is one of the reference that we use. Okay, I hope you have encountered this before. Uh, so you can click on this to get resources. Uh, so the resources, the resources here is purpose is actually to, in case you need to learn or I need to learn about using uh, how to use how to use certain app. Uh, so we might actually have it here in your compendium. Uh, okay. Yeah, we have 16 pages. Uh, you have how to use WebEx uh, and how to create game, uh, how to create project performance assessment, all, a lot of things, uh, how to create rubrics, how to use Padlet. Okay, you can use Padlet in your MOOC as well. Right. So a lot of tools available here. You can easily ref uh, find, search, and to get familiarized with the tools in case you want to use those tools in your MOOC. Okay, that's the first one. Okay, second one is the Garis Panduan Pembangunan and Penyampaian MOOC Malaysia. Uh, this is the standard MOOC guideline. Okay, used by all the university in Malaysia. Uh, so we make it available here. So you can have access to it here for you to have a look, lah, to have to read, to get some idea about what is MOOC all about, what is the expectation of the KPT, okay, Kemudian Pendidikan Tinggi, what do they hope for that we use MOOC for, okay. Uh, Garis Panduan Pembangunan Penyampaian MOOC Malaysia. Uh, you can go to this, to, to the resource page to download and take the time to read, lah. Okay, so all the guideline, all the information about the process of creating MOOC, what are the criteria, okay, in order to create the MOOC are also available here for you to read. Uh, like for example, Papan Utama, Tajok, Synopsis Khusus, Syllabus Khusus, Hasil Pembelajaran, okay. So Amalan Pembangunan MOOC, uh, how to design MOOC, how to create MOOC, how do you conduct a constructive alignment uh, of your MOOC to the CLO, uh, all are available here for you to read lah, additional resources.
Okay. So this, I hope you'll take advantage of this, uh, uh, this guideline. Uh, okay. So what is platform MOOC is all about? Okay. So at the moment, our platform, we are using open learning. Uh, we subscribe to open learning. So all our MOOC courses will be uploaded to open learning platform. Okay. So for that is MOOC development guideline. Okay. And then another resource is here. Buku Amalan Quality MOOC Malaysia. Uh, that's another one. Uh, this is the additional resource. After that MOOC guideline, we have another uh, uh, publication lah on Amalan Quality MOOC Malaysia. Uh, this is the one that we refer to when we do uh, to make sure the, to do the quality control lah of your MOOC once you have completed and ready for vetting. Uh, so please refer to this uh, to this booklet as well on Amalan Quality MOOC Malaysia. Uh, okay. It's, the context is almost similar, but this one is more about the quality aspect. Lah. How do we maintain the quality of our MOOC so that it, so that it's achieve the standards it, that is needed. Lah. Uh, so that when we achieve this qual the quality, uh, then student from other university who might use your MOOC, they can use it to apply for credit transfer. So this is one of the criteria, I mean, this is one of the guidelines that we follow, lah, try to achieve that standard so that it can be used for other university as well. Okay. Uh, so petunjuk quality, right? they have logo, what kind of, how many logo should we, should we should have, video promosi, video pengenalan khusus, maklumat khusus, also hasil pembelajaran. Okay, learning outcome, what type of activity can be used, Resource, how many resources recommended, portfolio, pentaksiran, grade, okay, assessment aspect, is it formative or summative, how, how, what do we expect for a formative type of assessment on a MOOC, and how, what do we expect for the summative as, uh, type of assessment in the MOOC. Okay, so the graphical aspect, the copyright uh, topic issue uh, jumlah masa keseluruhan bahan pembelajaran okay uh, about creating the video what type of video can be used how to create the video what are the aspect of the video uh, that did we need to pay attention of okay all right so next one is nawaran how do we gonna propose to offer the MOOC course Okay, governance, certification, okay, enrollment. Uh, so these are, so a lot lah, uh, something that you can take time to read. Huh? Uh, they even have this one, uh, pemindahan credit. Uh, the process, the suggested process of how to do the credit transfer on the, in the university. Okay, what are the syarat syarat? Okay, some, so some of this aspect is for the, for, for the management part lah the administration part but something that we should be aware of as we are developing developing our MOOC so that we want to make sure that our MOOC that the MOOC that we created achieve these standards okay so these are the two these are the two core guidelines lah we that I would recommend you take time to read okay Buku Amalan Quality MOOC Malaysia and also and also MOOC development guideline okay Another one, okay, is on MQA guideline on micro credential. Okay, uh, so it since uh, there are four faculties creating micro credential this year, uh, so I I think it's good also to take some time to to understand what is micro credential is all about. All right. Uh, so this one is this one is publication by MQA pula. Okay, guideline on micro credential. Okay, so these are the expectation lah by MQA. Uh, you, if you're doing micro credential, what are the aspects that uh, you need to be aware of as you are creating your MOOC version of micro credential? Okay. Right. Another resource is this one. Uh, this one we extract from the 
this the uh, this one if we extract from the guideline mode guideline okay it's the same thing that uh, dr hafiza uh present to you just now okay the self instructional module okay uh, so these are how you break down your the topic on your mooc okay uh, so each topic have a subtopic and what are the activity of that subtopic and maybe what are the proposed quiz that you want to do uh to do to assess the subtopic okay uh, so not necessarily but what what we expect for each topic is that the, each learning unit should have at least one activity and also accompanied by one type of assessment uh, but if you want to do a bit more detail like this uh, for example this example it split the sub it split that learning unit into several smaller topic uh, and then each smaller topic have a one activity and also one assess type of assessment for that sub topic okay uh, you can do that you can go as deep to that level or you want to do like oh one learning unit has one assessment and also one ac learning activity okay so please be please make sure that this learning activity and also the learning as learning assessment that we do is actually to, to be used as an evidence for the student okay uh, whatever activity or assessment that they do the what they did will be recorded on open learning and then when the student managed to complete uh, their course okay they receive the certificate of completion uh, and they want to apply for credit transfer they will also use uh, the learning activities or and the learning assessment uh, to as evidence uh, of their learning uh, so that be, will, that will be part of the consideration to help uh, to help the management administration part of unimas to decide whether do, do they approve their credit transfer or not uh, so that's why we need to have to have activity and assessment in your MOOC okay so not just video not just learning resources but also learning activity and also learning assessment the assessment uh, so that we can know oh okay he, this student has done a lot of things and we can see the understanding of the of the course through the activities and the assessment that they do uh, then we approve to give them credit transfer so that's why we need to make sure that each learning unit okay should have at least the activity and also the assessment so you can use the ones that dr Fiza showed you just now uh, to help plan uh, to do the planning okay this topic i need to do this activity this type of activity and also this type of assessment okay so for example like mcq quiz uh tak semestinya mesti ada mesti ada banyak quiz lah you don't need to have so many questions for that quiz maybe just a few questions for that particular subtopic or that topic is enough already just to see whether they understand the topic so you can refer to this okay next part is the or oh, learning resources i think learning resources okay your learning resources can be this one uh, your video okay usually MOOC when we take MOOC I uh, really we would expect people to create videos lah. but uh, not not everything must be video uh, uh, yang penting mesti ada video lecture video uh, maybe what type of video that you may have okay this uh, you can refer to here okay what type of video you can do uh, video asli uh, or video guna pautan, pautan dari video sedia ada uh, video that's already available open source lah or open educational resources video uh, that we okay based on what we did, we take the workshop last week uh, two weeks ago kan ada oer kan educational resources if you have if you found a video that's suitable for that you can use it in your MOOC because it's open source i mean open educational resources type of video you can use in your MOOC another types of video that you can create for your MOOC is rakaman pengajaran dalam bilik dajah or kuliah uh, temu duga dengan pakar interview okay field trip let's say you have a field trip to uh, to a certain location to demonstrate uh, as in some environment ka, or a visit field trip okay pun boleh animation 
okay let's say you have to show some complex uh, concept uh, you can use animation to demonstrate that okay and also persembahan slide dengan video narasi penyampai uh, this is a common one lah uh, the common one that we all do right now is we provide a uh, presentation of powerpoint recorded presentation of powerpoint with the narration so there are several types of video that you can use lah the one you can read continue read for your own okay basically try to make the video interesting okay jangan buat yang boring uh, so use some vi some interesting visuals lah graphics okay don't put too many text uh, jangan don't show uh, like your, uh, the slide with all the text okay so try to balance it with some images graphics diagram okay as you narrate the content of your slide we have a checklist here as well MOOC quality evaluation checklist uh, so this one we also extract from Amalan quality MOOC punya uh, the guideline just now that I showed you just now so uh, you can refer to this lah to do a self assessment okay you can check for your own okay do I have this do I have that in my MOOC uh, so do I have a logo do I have a video promotion okay uh, this one we have our own version lah uh, when we do because we have our own vetting uh, stage of your MOOC. Uh, you can refer to this as you create your own MOOC. Uh, whether whether you have achieved all this or not. You can find it here lah in the resource hub. Any new document that we have do we manage to get or we receive from MQA ka, from KPT re related to MOOC, we'll definitely will share it to with you guys here uh, in the resource hub. Uh, so everything are here. So you tap the result. Oh, where are the so so don't worry lah about it. Uh, okay. So for example, we have another one, another resource that you use is about this one. Okay. When you create a slide presentation, PowerPoint slide. Uh, always remember to use this logo lah, Unimas MOOC logo. Okay, you can also use uh, this official uh, logo, Unimas logo. But if you use this, it's good enough already. Uh, Unimas MOOC. As long as ada nama University Malaysia Sarawak lah on your presentation slide. Okay, you can use this. You can also download this here. Uh, you can also download it here. It's also available on the resource hub. Okay. Uh, you can also the powerpoint is here the template uh, you can download the template here okay but if you want to use your own template can make sure to remember to put your the unimas mooc logo lah on the template okay uh, so where to find the logo the logo is here as well all right uh, in the resource hub uh, there are two types of logo. Uh, if you want to mendata logo, the uh, the horizontal logo, okay. Or you, if you want to use a square type logo, you can you can use it here as well. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is an example. I think uh, okay. This one, Doctor Aviza has already showed to you just now, all right? Demonstrated to you example of a MOOC course content page. Uh, so this one is by um, Prof Chu and uh, this one, yes. Uh, so it's very nice. This is very, the way they arrange the layout. Okay, they have a uh, signposting if it's important overview objectives. Okay, they even use the image. To indicate oh this resource is a video lecture video and this rich uh this resource is a lecture notes okay try to use graphics lah to help to help make that arrange uh to help the learners when we, when they look on your page on your MOOC page they know quickly what is that what is the resource about so for example or oh, is it a quiz okay it's an activity okay so it's also available here Okay, so please explore lah, uh, the resource hub here. Okay. Uh, so banyak lagi. So we even have some open learning. So if I explain to you all, uh, it will take some time lah. Uh, 
but uh, but it's, it's they're all here for you to take your time to look okay a uh, logo montage okay when you create a video recorded video of your uh, of your video lecture uh, please include this lah as a beginning at the beginning or at the end okay or both or at the beginning and also at the end okay Can you hear the sound? No. Ah, no? Just oh, okay. the movement, yeah. Just the movement, okay. Okay, but this other sound lah. That's a sound, okay. Uh, so one thing nice about this uh, video montage is that it has a sound to jingle lah, jingle uh, compared to just an image. Uh, you can use this as well at, at the, as, an as a starting point of your video or at the end point of your video or both okay so do consider using them uh, it's also available in the resource hub okay so so even topic on micro credential recent webinar the document we also upload it here lah, the powerpoint slide uh, if you heard of uh, do you know uh, professor dr karim uh, so he's the youth from USM. Uh, so he's he's the one of the writer for the guideline of micro credential MQA. So so whatever notes that we get that that might be useful for MOOC to our MOOC here, uh, we'll put it here lah in the resource hub. Okay, for you to refer to. So so resource hub is like a library lah, uh, for everyone. Okay. Okay. Next part of the resource hub uh, of our MOOC teams is the webinar. Uh, so let's say all the webinar that we have conducted or any webinar or edit any webinar related webinar from other university that's being shared to, to us. Okay, we'll share it here as well. Okay, so for example, our session here and our previous session and uh, once we edit the video, we'll upload on Come YouTube channel, and and we'll also make it. Uh, we'll inform, notify you here on on the webinar part channel on the webinar channel of this Microsoft MOOC Dev team. Okay, so this is our last year's webinar that we conducted. Okay, so we share it here, even the notes. Okay, if other color other notes, we share it, the we accompany the notes, the webinar. With the notes okay sometimes we had a the we even have the open learning uh we have representative from open learning conducted a tutorial on how to use the open learning site as you upload your content to open learning there we have a video here as well okay micro credentials uh, this one open learning onboarding for Unimas educator is also available here. And the recent one, the most recent post here is our two weeks ago punya session, our MOOC session, planning and designing a MOOC and introduction to copyright and open educational resources. So we will share any updates lah of our webinar for here in case of uh, you or your members that dapat hadir on that day. Uh, we if if we do our webinar, if we do if you conduct our workshop uh, through online, then we manage to record it. We'll post it here, okay? Uh, but for your information, the first half of our workshop, workshop development series we'll do online, but the second half we'll have to do hands on, okay? Uh, but because they are, our developers are not that many this year, only five can. Uh, so we definitely it's possible to do hands-on while while maintaining SOP. Uh, that one we'll plan a bit later how we're going to conduct it. But you don't worry about that first. Okay. So far, most of our webinar for now is online. So any anything that is recorded online, we can post it here for you to refer to. 
So what you can do here, let's say you want to watch, you can go click on this icon. Okay, it will bring up to this page. Okay. Sekarang nampak. Uh, so, uh, so, so you can find it here lah. Alright. Alright. So that part is the webinar part. Okay. Uh, so it's available on Come Unimas. Uh, Come Unimas YouTube page. Okay. And the last part of the, of our MOOC, of our, our Microsoft team is this FAQ. Okay. The frequently asked question. Okay. So where to find it, go to ZFAQ. Okay. You click on it and it will load this uh, frequently asked question. Uh, these are the popular questions that being asked to us and so we decide to put it to put it here okay for you to go through and read okay uh, so number one okay where is unimas mooc page okay you can find it here you can click on this okay so when should we start developing our mooc course okay uh, should start now lah. okay since you already know that you already have uh, you already selected for you are selected to develop MOOC for this year, uh, it's, it's good to start now. Lah, huh? uh, even though we are at the early stage, uh, can start what you can do now is start planning what, how you want to arrange the, your MOOC content. And when should we complete our MOOC course? It is highly anticipated that you complete your MOOC course by the end of the year. And this means that your MOOC is ready to be published in open learning platform with all the contents uh, learning resources, activities, and assessment uh, ready and made available in the course. So by end of this year, we hopefully uh, everything's ready to be published. Where can I use a green screen facility for my MOOC video? Uh, so in Unimas, okay, you can use our MOOC studio at CTF34 to capture green screen footage to be used for your MOOC videos. If you want to book the studio to record green screen footage for your MOOC lecture videos, please contact uh, Dr. Hafiza, okay, and book a slot so that that clash with the, because we have other MOOCs as well are using, want to use uh, the iStudio, green screen studio to create their MOOC course. So we have, we have that MOOC at CTF 3 and 4 that you definitely can use. But uh, make sure you uh, check book with Dr. Hafiza first, uh, uh, so that to double check with the availability. Okay, the next one is, is it necessary necessary to use green screen to create my lecture video? Uh, no, okay, it's not necessary. You can record your video at any relevant location. At, at any relevant location, as long as it is related to the topic they are going to cover for your course. Okay, you can actually tag do 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 the video shoot outside uh outside unimas or inside unimas any location in unimas the katase ka the ka pavilion ka uh where you think is suitable okay where you think has a nice background view uh go ahead okay tak ada masalah okay but then if you planning to shoot outside uh please uh make sure to get the permission lah in case you are you plan to do let's say you want to take shoot at uh, somewhere like museum ke? okay museum Sarawak you want to shoot at museum Sarawak maybe you can get to ask permission whether you can do a video shoot there okay let's say again another one for our FLC kan? FLC maker what uh, mode with industry uh, so maybe they want to conduct a video shoot the hospital uh, so since you have a MOA kan, uh, maybe you can specify in your MOA that we will be collaborating with the staff at Sarawak, Hospital Sarawak to conduct a video shoot the Hospital Sarawak uh, or, or use the facility to do the video shoot or maybe uh, involve their nurses. Uh, so just make sure to get permission. Lah. Uh, so that's why that especially when you have uh, involvement with the PEHAT industry uh, to have an MOA so that we don't have uh, issue regarding uh, using the facility at the your industry partner your location. So go ahead, you can use green screen, but not necessary. Mesti pakai green screen. Uh, you can do screen screen uh, screen casting. Just enough um, or okay actually. Next question is: Must all the content in the MOOC course to be developed be in the form of video? Uh, so no, it's not required that 
your MOOC course must be hundred percent video. Okay, you can use PDF, you can use web page, uh, you can use P uh, PowerPoint, pun boleh. podcast, audio podcast, uh, pun boleh. There are so many ways. Denji is a learning resource. Uh, what what type of media that you use is up to you as long as it is suitable. You can use your journal articles. Let's say you conducted, uh, you have published several uh, journal articles. Uh, you can use that in your MOOC as well uh, as one of the learning resources. All right. Next question is seven. When will when will our MOOC course when will okay? Let me delete this one. Uh, when will our MOOC course be offered to students? Okay. Uh, so this year is about development. Okay. So if if you are slated to develop. Uh, your MOOC course this this year means we're gonna publish it. We're gonna offer it next year, uh, hopefully early next year lah. So last year, last year MOOC twenty twenty, ah, by right we supposed to publish it, ah, uh, offer it this year. My MOOC is to be developed under MOOC with industry. What are the requirements for that type of MOOC? Okay, I think this one we already explained. Okay, uh, in our last session. Okay, make sure that we have. Memorandum of agreement between the faculty and the industry partner. The what are the contents like the use of facility, the cost, uh, maybe how much we do we want to charge, on who are the uh, learners participants involved taking the MOOC. Uh, all all of this can be decided lah and agreed upon with your industry through memorandum of agreement. Should I combine the instructions for learning activities or assessment in the same video? So it is recommended to separate learning resources video and learning activities video. Okay, try to split them up. Don't put together. Make it modularized lah. So easy for you to make changes if necessary. Uh, so some we had one group, uh, one faculty this year. They combined. Uh, learning resources after, at the end of learning resources straight away they give out the activity. Uh, I think that that part is okay. But if let's say you want to change the activity, it, you have to re-render the whole video again. Uh, so it takes time. So it's better that you split the learning resource with the learning activities. Huh? Uh, don't put them together so that it's easy for you to make changes quickly and efficiently, lah. Uh, right? So when you plan for your learning activities, assessment, and the learn learning resources, don't put them all in one video. Split them up. Okay, maybe learning resources is a video, the learning activity is just a page on open learning. Okay, and learning assessment is also a quiz on open learning. Okay. So number ten. Uh, can I ask the learners to submit the assignment in Elib? Ah, okay. Ah, uh, this one to make sure we are doing. We are using MOOC. Okay, since the learners can be from anywhere around the world, ah, uh, it is not suitable to ask your MOOC course learners to submit their assignments in Elib, because Elib and Open Learning are two totally two different platform, and Elib are uh, only for student minimal student. Okay, manakala MOOC, whereas MOOC is open to anyone. Around the world to take, uh, so don't mention or oh, please submit your assignment your in Elib. Okay, so the maybe the learner will not understand. Huh? Uh, what what's Elib? Uh, because cook that because they don't use Elib. So make sure you don't 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 mention about submitting the assignment or refer to any content in Elib on your video or in your activity lah. Uh, how should I address my learners in my MOOC course? Okay, uh, so by offering a MOOC course, you are allowing learners outside Unimas, uh, individual from other countries, individual from any age group, uh, even kids pun boleh take your MOOC that you create. Sometimes they just want to learn more about a topic. Maybe they may not biology, so they just take any MOOC biology that created by Unimas. Okay, they want to see, they want to survey. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm interested in biology. So let me take one MOOC course first, just to get a taste. Okay, maybe they like it, they will take it. Thus, it is recommended to address them generally as learners and not specifically as Unimas student. 
Okay, how do I create video lectures? Okay, you can create video lectures quickly as learning resources by using Cisco WebEx or Microsoft Teams. The one that we are doing now, uh, you can you can do that for your learning for your lecture video. It's not an issue. It's a common lah. It's a it's a it's also doable and possible. Okay, you can also use MOOCs iStudio, our green screen studio, to create your your video footage that you will use as you edit your video for your uh, lecture video. So if you want to have on location video shoot, you can make appointment to book our calm photographer to assist you if necessary. Okay, let's say you want to take a do a video shoot uh, in you around Unimas to do your to give your video lecture. Uh, you can also ask uh, make a request to book appointment of our photographer, Mr. Fitz. Okay, he can help you to uh, to capture the video for you as you do the lecture. He's, he's very good at it, so you can ask for his help. Okay, but first make sure you ask, you make appointment uh, through Dr. Pizza first. Okay, so that we can find a right appointment, right schedule to conduct that, that session, uh, the video shoot session. Next is what is the duration of each video, MOOC video clip? Okay, there is no strict duration for each MOOC video clip. Aim to create bite-sized or short videos that cover one subtopic for each learning unit. Uh, one hour long video is not recommended. Uh, what you can do is to split those content in the long video into shorter length videos. Okay, try to aim to create a short video clips of your uh, learning resources of your, of your video lecture. Okay. Another question, common question is how do I conduct final exam in MOOC? Okay, since the nature of MOOC is meant to be online based, uh, flexible and personalized learning approach, uh, final exam is not a common practice. Okay, so the collection of graded assignment of your MOOC will result the overall score of passing grade to obtain the certificate of completion or certificate of achievement on the MOOC. So what student need to pass the MOOC to achieve to get the certificate is to do all the learning activity and to do the assessment that you assign in MOOC. Okay, if they manage to do that, uh, then automatically uh, Open Learning, the MOOC Open Learning platform will generate the certificate, lah, certificate of completion or certificate of achievement. In the certificate, we will we'll have your signature as well, Sumatu. So then the student will have that certificate and then they, uh, they will apply for credit transfer. Okay. Oh, number 15, can I use my MOOC course during normal scheduled semester? Uh, so let's say uh, you have your own semester class, uh, and, but then you also have a MOOC version of that class. Uh, so you can also use the MOOC that you created during for your class in the normal scheduled semester pun boleh since you already created it and it's yours so you definitely can use it next question is number 16 all right can i request professional video team to create my videos you can discuss with your faculty top management if the faculty is willing to invest or hire external professional video team to help produce the videos okay at calm we do not have a dedicated professional video team to focus only developing MOOC as our e-learning staff have other roles and responsibility at CAM. So you can use the facility such as the MOOC I Studio to record your video lecture. You can make appointment with our CAM photographer to record video footage outdoor too. And MOOC development workshop series will be organized by CAM eh, to, to the faculty nominated developers. Please attend the MOOC development workshop series to learn how to produce your MOOC course. So to help, to have, a, if you want to do like very high quality type of video, much like film standard lah. Uh, so maybe you can hire outside lah, uh, for outside service. But we don't have the budget to provide you with that. But your maybe your faculty can have can invest in that in that lah. Uh, through through the enterprise account, your faculty can consider hiring lah. Uh, because if you if let's say let's say you complete your MOOC okay and you want to offer it you can also consider charging the MOOC okay and that and 
learners who take your mock, they have, they have to pay a fee to take your mock. Uh, then that fee can cover ballet, lah, the cost of the devel developing the mock. Uh, so it's up to you lah, uh, whether you want to use a professional video team, production team to do it for you. We'll let you go, uh, but the costs have to be covered by your faculty lah. Okay, and the last one, okay, number 17. Now this, the common question we, we got asked, uh, where should I upload my lecture or instructional videos? Okay, uh, so when you created your lecture video, please send that lecture video to Dr. Hafiza for her to upload in our uh, Unimas MOOC Punya YouTube channel. Okay, so all the MOOC videos that created will be upload in there. And then we'll give you the link for you to embed on your open learning page, on your op your MOOC course in open learning. The reason why we do this is so that we have a centralized place uh, to upload all the resources. Okay, so, so far all the videos in the past have been uploaded on uh, Unimas MOOC YouTube channel. Uh, and then we'll give you the link for you to embed on your MOOC course. So if you have any other questions, uh, we'll, we'll all, if you popular ones, we will add it here as, uh, as we go along, uh, as we develop the progress of our MOOC. So I hope uh, this frequently asked question here can help answer some of your uh, questions that you have in mind right now. Uh, if you, if, if there are some of the questions, if you have other questions that's not in here, uh, feel free to ask, okay? Uh, we have, we will try our best to answer it. Lah. So that is the FAQ part of our Microsoft team page. Okay, so we have the faculty personal page. Okay, FAQK. Uh, so the, the reason why we have empty here because uh, this 2020, 2021, uh, this is a new baru start. Uh, but if you have last year's one, uh, you have already a long conversation, lah, but right, we already have a long discussion between the developers and us. Uh, okay, so we have, uh, we have 10 minutes. Lah. <laughs> okay, we have banyak lagi, not sure actually, but okay, so, uh, before, uh, we have, I have to show you some other things as well. So let me stop share this part, this screen. Can you see this screen? My class, Dr. Terry. Uh, my, uh, okay. Uh, so, okay. So, for my class, right? Uh, for your micro, for those doing micro credential, okay? So, you know which course are going to be turned into a MOOC course, kan? Uh, so, please download the, we will refer to the course outline in my class to tally lah, to check whether uh, your MOOC content created, uh, whether it's setara, tally or not with uh, your MOOC. Okay, we will refer to this lah as an official uh, guide for us to make sure that oh your content is all the content you created on the MOOC is based on the ones listed in course outline. All right. So okay, so this is our Unimas Come YouTube page. Okay. Uh, so please subscribe. Okay, if you have if you have YouTube on your mobile phone or if you Please subscribe to it, click on this button so that any new updates, new videos related to MOOC or maybe related to online teaching and learning that you can use for your MOOC, uh, you, you can find it here. Okay, so we have created so many resources here as well uh, that you can use, you can refer to. Banyak uh, sudah. So, even some how to prepare, what, what are the tools, external tools that you can use for your MOOC. Uh, so it's available here as well. Okay. And then another thing is that we also provide progress report. Okay. Compared to last year, we only provide our progress report to at uh, Jawatan Kuasa uh, Strategic Unimas. Okay. But this time, uh, based on the feedback from the faculty's dean, Okay, we will provide our report every month, every month, end of the month, we provide, we will deliver, send our email of all the progress of the development progress, uh, termasuk 2020 and also 2021, as long as yang belum siap. Uh, so, so I try to zoom in, is it zoom in, Dr. Visa? Yes, uh, it's uh, clear. It's clear, okay, all right, so, so we will, 
every month, we, end of the month, we will email out to your faculty dean. Lah. After your faculty lah, consists of your dean, your deputy dean, undergraduate, uh, your e-learning MOOC coordinators, faculty MOOC coordinators, and also your ketua head of strategy. Uh, because MOOC is, is actually a KPI of Unimas right now. Uh, so we also have to let them know as well lah, about the progress. Uh, so we'll have we'll create an infographic lah to inform the faculty about the progress. Uh, so these are the progress that Dr. Hafiza mentioned just now. Okay, these are the milestone, the percentage. If you have achieved this, you achieve ten percent. If we conduct a consultation session, you will get twenty percent. That's the progress lah. That's the that's the progress tracking mechanism that we use. I think Dr. Hafiza already explained. Okay, so another one, another one that. Uh, new one just created. Okay, this is an infographic as well, lah. Uh, that you can also use to refer to our Unimas MOOC development process. Okay, uh, so this one attending MOOC workshop. If you have, if you have, if all the members, of faculty started attending MOOC workshop, you have already achieved ten percent, lah. Uh, so next part is our consultation session. Okay, uh, so we plan to do it uh, right after after this session but not directly right after this uh in the future la, we'll make appointment la, with our five project faculty teams okay we have a consultation session just to get some idea or clear something up if you have any other question that specifically related to your faculty uh, to your own MOOC development uh, so we discuss here okay then of course you by right now you can already start it creating your MOOC content, okay? You can already start creating your uh, development video. Video, uh, video resources pun boleh. Video material, uh, video, MOOC content development means your assignment, your activity, what type of assessment you wanna do. Remember that Dr. Hafiza shared the self instructional module too. Uh, so you can start planning lah what you wanna do. Okay, once you have uploaded all the content or material, uh, and open learning, okay, you achieve 70%. Uh, then once you have achieved, you let us know. You send an email to us that oh, all my content uh, for my MOOC content are already uploaded on open learning and ready to be assessed by our faculty uh, subject matter expert and uh, our MOOC unit members. So once you have reached this stage, okay, uh, it is you achieve 75%, okay. So we what we target is I think you should uh, target that our, your MOOC is ready to be vetted by us okay, by October. Uh, okay, based on our progress lah. So that because we need time for our reviewer to assess your MOOC, right? To vet your MOOC. So usually we give one month lah for them to do it. Okay. And at the same time, okay, but uh you can start your MOOC video development, promo video development as well. Uh, this one, you can already start at the beginning as well. Okay, once you already know, once I think when you are reach around this stage, you can already start considering creating a promo video development uh, to promote your MOOC. Okay, once your, vid once your MOOC is ready, you have uh, your promo video la, to promote your MOOC so that your potential learners will take your MOOC. And also, we definitely have to vet your promo video as well before we use it. Uh, so to make sure that you have all the content necessary information uh, mentioned in the promo video, uh, so that student will have enough potential learners will have enough information for them to consider taking the course. Once that's ready, then we do another final pilot test. Uh, this time with the MOOC coordinators. Uh, so your content ready, your MOOC project, uh, your promo video is ready, and your open learning MOOC is ready. So we're gonna let our MOOC coordinators, okay, not your faculty MOOC coordinators, other faculty MOOC coordinators, to try out your MOOC, okay, to get some idea to see whether anything missed out ka, anything that terlepas pandang ka, or anything that can be improved, just a sh make. By then, by this stage, it should be just minor improvement, lah. Okay. Uh, 
So once the mode coordinator says, oh, okay, this one is quite, is actually ready to be used, to be offered. Uh, then we are gonna promote your MOOC course. Okay, we're gonna inform to the students, Unimas student, and also we make it known to promote lah through our Facebook uh, to where well, we ask UG to help promote as well your MOOC course to the public. Uh, so so that your your the public and also your student can start taking your MOOC. Okay. So these are the the process lah, the project development uh steps stages that we will go through. Okay. Um, so and this this information are all will be mentioned here lah. Uh, it's the same here, just that with the sound is the other infographic skill. Uh, so this is an example of the progress lah, progress bar. Okay, uh, so other faculty tak banyak progress. Uh, other faculty FSS, uh, so they have good progress right now. Okay, they are almost complete. They are at, at the now they are having the undergoing the uh, subject matter expert review. Uh, so once they have done that, the percentage will increase lah in terms of progress. Uh, so your your progress will be will be listed here, uh, starting this end of this month. Hey, wait, wait. Ah, uh, for next month. Next month will include your courses here in our progress report in our monthly progress report. Okay, at the moment belum lagi because once we endorse your list, uh, your projects in Senat level, uh, then we mention it here. We I think in terms of video development. Uh, okay, let me show quickly lah. Okay, so Microsoft Stream is a uh, where to find Microsoft Stream. Microsoft Stream you can find on your on your Office three six five. Okay, you can click here. Uh, you find this one Stream. Okay, we actually have a tool to do a screen recording uh, through Microsoft Stream. As we, we that we already subscribed to, uh, so if you want to create a video lecture on screen, uh, you can if you don't want to use Microsoft Team or your or your Webex, okay, you can also create, uh, do screen recording here, record screen or video, uh, you can click here, and you have this option appear, record screen or video, it's same thing same thing like uh, like Microsoft Team as well lah. Uh, you can pick you want to have a screen and camera or camera only or screen only uh, if you want screen only you're just gonna capture your screen to do to do the video recording okay if you want to involve your face uh, so you have so you need a webcam lah, uh, to make sure you have a webcam so that uh, your your you have a, your face will appear on the screen as well uh, then you cl click on the start recording Okay, but at the moment I don't want my my face, <laughs> so just do a screen recording lah. Uh, so I can pick. Can you see this this dialog box appear, Doctor Visa? Yes, yes. Ah, uh, dapat entire screen, uh, uh, entire Windows, screen window, and uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Edge. Edge. Ah, so I I'm using Microsoft Edge right now. So you have you can actually pick which which ah uh, which region that you want to use to record your video. Ah, uh, okay. So. You can use Microsoft Team. You can so you can use entire screen pun boleh. Uh, once you're happy, you can also make sure you click share audio lah. In case in case you want to show video, can you want to show you want to show video? Uh, if let's say you want to show a uh, recorded video as well on your recording, uh, you make sure you do turn on share audio. Then you click the share button. Okay, let's say for example, I want to record this video. Uh, MOOC development process. I can click share. Uh, so can you see this? Uh, can you see this one sharing this tab? Stop. Nampak oh, tak? yes. Ah, nampak, okay. nampak. Uh, so at the moment, uh, at the moment, uh, stream is recording this screen right now. Uh, so you can actually start talking. Start uh, narrating lah. This the topic. Let's say this is the PowerPoint slide. Uh, you can, I can start narrating. Uh, welcome to this lesson. Today I'm going to show you Unimas MOOC development process. Blah 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 blah. Uh, attending MOOC workshop, consultation session, MOOC content development, video material development. Okay, blah 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 blah. 
Uh, for more details, you may refer to our MOOC dev in Microsoft Teams. Okay, then done. Then click the stop button. So once you click the stop button, you go to the stream page. Where is it? Ah, uh, this one. Ah, uh, Microsoft Stream. Ah, uh, then can you see this? View re review recordings. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Recording. Ah, uh, see. So this Microsoft Stream has already recorded your screen just now that you choose, and you can adjust lah. You can decide. Maybe or oh, maybe I just want to adjust. I right, let me play. Okay, let me try again lah. You can click on this icon here to move around where you want to on your timeline okay and play uh, so can, can you hear the audio uh no <laughs> no okay okay tap, uh -huh. tap, tap, just want to let you know that tak dapat share audio rasanya oh okay oh yeah okay ah uh, tak apa so just just assume ada lah okay for my view ada i can i can hear my voice just now that i recorded as I do my screen casting just now. Okay, I can trim it. I can adjust, or oh, maybe this part is too long. I can cut it. I can make it shorter. Uh, so I'm so I just take this region, lah, the ones highlighted here in red. Uh, if I'm not happy, happy, I can record again. Okay, but if I'm happy with it, I can upload to stream. Uh, so stream will start edit, cut out the, the section that I trim up just now. Okay, as is preparing lah. Uh, uh, so I can do a test lah. I can type test test stream session zero one. You can put description. Okay, allow everyone your in your company to view. Okay, don't don't click on it lah. Okay, just it's it's your own personal view only. So make sure don't click on it, and then update video details. Uh, okay, click on it. And you see this, okay? Let's say you are you're doing as a team, can? Let's say I want Doctor Hafiza to to view my recording as well, so that for her to have a look as well, can? I can just type here Hafiza, okay? And I click search icon here. Ah, uh, there you can see Hafiza, okay? So I I can let Hafiza able to see this video as well, so she can she will receive an email lah from stream that she can view this recorded video as well for her to view. Uh, okay, you can also do that. Let's say if you want to share the video first, the the raw footage of your video for everyone to download, maybe to edit. Ka. Okay, so if you're happy with it, you can you can you can click here, publish. Okay, don't worry. Since you already allow the 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 viewers to be yourself and Doctor Hafiza, okay, and click publish here. Okay, and click apply. Ah, uh, so then, then you, ah, uh, so then you have this recorded available on your stream. Okay, your personal stream, and one thing nice about stream is also the transcript. Okay, ah, uh, so at the moment my audio transcript is being processed, so belum ready lagi. Hopefully, it's ready now because it's quite short. Ah, uh, see, you see here. This is the auto automated generated transcript that's created uh, for you to use, for you to refer. Uh, you can, because sometimes you want to provide transcript feature on your, you want to put some transcript uh, caption, uh, caption in your MOOC letter. So you can copy paste this transcript here uh, and for you to edit, for you to put as well as part of your learning resources or you use it to to put it on your video as well. Uh, okay, you can also edit lah. Let's say, oh, maybe. Uh, okay, market. Uh, okay, maybe this one. I can actually edit this transcript. Uh, I, can, I can edit. I double click here. Uh, wait, I can click here. Edit. Edit transcript. Ah, uh, this one market. I can I can delete this one. Ah, uh, this that word is a ex, uh, error word lah. Uh, accidental word that sebut. I don't want that to appear in my transcript, so I can delete it, and I save it. 
So the transcript, so this is the edited transcript lah, feature. Uh, so I hope this is very useful uh, for you to use as you create your MOOC video. And if you're happy with the transcript, you can copy and post, I can put in your Word document lah, as a part of the additional resources for your MOOC. Okay, you can also download, uh, let's say this, you can download this video just now. Where to download the video that you created here, you can go to this part, the three dot more action, download video. Uh, then you will, you can download the video immediately. Okay. You can edit, update video detail. You can still trim your video. All right. So, banyak feature lah you can use uh, to Microsoft Stream. Uh, actually, if you want to do screen casting, you can use Microsoft Stream lah. Just to let you know about it. Okay, that one is Stream. I think I think that's I think we covered all supposed to cover today's session, right? Uh, okay. All right. So I I stop my I stop sharing. Okay, so okay, so, uh, apology for the lebih masa. <laughs> so, our participants here, do you have any questions about uh, our development progress and about Microsoft Teams? You want to ask? Feel free to ask now. I guess there's no question, Dr. Terry. Okay, okay, all right. All right. Okay, okay. So if there's no question, I uh, thank you for joining us uh, and I will, I will uh, thank you for your patience and watching. Uh, don't worry, we have a recorded version to share with you later. Uh, so I'm going to pass the floor to Dr. Hafiza. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Terry. It's, uh, I'm really interested with the stream uh, record. Yeah, it's my first time actually. Uh, macam, oh, best juga, eh? mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's easy to use lah, and it's already available in our uh, office, uh, Microsoft Office lah. Yeah, we we actually subscribe yeah. to it already. So, yeah, oh, yeah. by the way, stream, the maximum limit is fifteen minutes. La. Uh, so that one is good as well. I think I think it's good lah because to make sure that we don't exceed, uh, we don't create a too long video, because uh, we want to create a bite sized video. Kan? So, kalau boleh, jangan buat video yang terlalu panjang. Make it short, make it sweet, make it short and sweet. Uh, so that, uh, so that it's easy for our learners when they watch our YouTube, uh, our MOOC video. It's, it's, it's uh, easy for them to watch and learn and it doesn't take too long. Okay. Uh, so, they can, so make it, make your video based on subtopics. That is a good practice lah. All right. Okay. Oh, uh, I have a new question here. Okay, uh, right. I think uh, I, I think I missed the workshop and consultation session because uh, just join and joining us from this uh, from faculty of uh, faculty of cognitive science and human development. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's okay. We we actually have the recorded version, and if I'm not mistaken, Doctor Terry has added you in uh, Microsoft Teams. Microsoft hmm. Teams, uh, uh, Microsoft Teams punya ni, uh, Team MOOC, MOOC Devs. So, no worries. Uh, consultations not started yet, so <laughs> no worries. Uh, belum lagi, we didn't have any consultation session yet. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe after Raya, maybe after Raya. Not so sure. We will discuss, I will discuss with Dr. Terry. And of course, we will email to you when we, when you are available to do the discussion or consultation session. So, okay, um, um, I guess I should share the QR code attendance for those who, who didn't have a chance to scan the QR code. Let me share again. Okay, so please scan your QR code or if you couldn't scan your QR code, I will key in your attendance manually. Thank you so much for your attendance and uh, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Welcome.